Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and are glad in it as we gather. Uh, welcome to Union. We are a vibrant and growing faith community. Our building is in the South End. I'm uh, calling in from Roxbury. Uh, we are gathered from all over the world on this first Sunday of Advent, the day we mark with hope. We are glad that you are here because we are indeed people of hope. If it's your first time here at Union, we extend a special and very warm welcome uh, to you. And we invite you to go ahead and note in the chat if it's your first time. We also invite you to go on to our website, unionboston.org forward slash online and fill out a connect card so that a member of our ministerial and pastoral team might be in touch with you. Uh, as people are already doing, we invite you to go ahead and note your name, where you're calling from in the chat. Uh, so it's in our records and we can have a good a tracking of who is in the house on this Sunday. And we are so glad that you are in the house indeed. And because we are a church uh, that does things a little bit differently, we invite you to text in church, uh, to talk back uh, to us, to the preachers, uh, to the singers, to the participants in the chat. Uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, just uh, make some noise throughout the service so that we know indeed that today is a very, very, very special uh, day. All of the bulletins and notes are on the app and online, but on this Sunday, this Sunday marked uh, with hope, we begin a journey uh, from here to there from Christ the King Sunday, which we celebrated on last week, to the day of Christmas, when Christ breaks in and transforms the world. And in anticipation for all that God is doing and has done through Christ Jesus, uh, we are thankful. So let's turn it to the Holy One in prayer as I toss it to Minister Kyle. Yes, good morning, beloved. I'm Minister Kyle, and uh, I'm going to be opening us up in prayer this morning. Welcome again to Union Church. And as we turn to God in prayer, I invite you to lift up your own prayer concerns in the chat and in your heart. What are you grateful for this day? And what are you anxious about or fearful about this day? What do you need to be transformed and healed by God's hope today? So, beloved, let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for the opportunity and resources to gather online in the midst of a global pandemic and for the sharing of resources that are helping us remain connected in socially distanced and isolating times. God, we thank you for each other. We who are seeing each other through these difficult days we who are spending time with one another on phone calls and text messages and Zoom videos and whenever possible and safely in person to lift up our weary spirits. We who give to one another out of our deep love rooted in you, O oh God. So loving God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing and all that you will continue to do. Yes, God, we are here on our first Advent Sunday and we reach out to you for real hope. That hope that is not found in worldly riches that will perish or in glittering fame that will vanish like a mist. God, you give us a future with a hope that is worth believing in, worth fighting for, and worth living into today. A hope that is rooted in Christ Jesus, the word of love, of life, and of liberation. Yes, God, you always make a way out of no way. God, you are always on time, and yes, God, you make your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So we praise you this day and every day. We lift up these prayer requests in the chat with the hope that you will indeed answer them. We lift up other concerns, like a divided nation, rising COVID cases in the United States, for a world aching for justice and healing, and particularly those in our union family that are fighting COVID-19, undergoing surgeries and more. 
So God, with fire in our bones and a twinkle in our eyes, we have hope today as we eagerly anticipate the coming of Christ Jesus anew in our lives and in our world. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. This morning, grateful, grateful, started me on my way, grateful, put food on my table, gratefulness is flowing, with my hands lifted up, I am grateful, and my mouth filled with praise, I am grateful, your unfailing love surrounds me, gratefulness. Good morning, beloved. I am going to be doing, I'm Michaela, and I'll be doing a reading from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will lose its brightness, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see that the promised one coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then the angels will be sent to gather the chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the promised one is near, right at the door. The truth is, before this generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for the day or the hour, nobody knows it, 
neither the angels of heaven nor the begotten, no one but Abba God. Be constantly on watch, stay awake. You do not know when the appointed time will come. It is like the people traveling abroad. They leave their home and put the workers in charge, each with a certain task. And those who watch at the front gate are ordered to stay on the alert. So stay alert. You do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether at dusk or at midnight, when the cock crows or early dawn. Do not let the owner come suddenly and catch you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. On this, the first Sunday of Advent, we proclaim this hope that God can and will turn the ways of this world upside down. Indeed, these are incredibly difficult times and we are living in a chaotic world where suffering abounds. We proclaim that this world is not the end of things. We proclaim hope. That is to say that even as we wonder about what it means to be entering this season of waiting and expectation, we do not sit idle. We remember that this journey is about God's insistence that love meet humanity amid chaos and destruction, not to conquer it but to redeem it. We remember this journey is about God's insistence that our lives preach life in all things. We remember that hope does not appear like a quick fix. Hope is born and still it must have time to grow. So we proclaim, blessed are we. Blessed are we who doubt. Blessed are we who speak our truths, who say we are spiritually impoverished and therefore not so certain about everything. Blessed are we who admit that we have grown numb to the ways of this world. Blessed are we who, at times, have nothing left to offer. Blessed are we who feel we can't fall apart because we have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are we who still haven't figured it out. Blessed are we who are weary. We proclaim blessed are we because even though, even though the ghost of hopelessness haunts our progress, our lives still speak. We proclaim blessed are we because even though the voice of God can sound like a faint whisper, we are still trying. We are still moving forward. We proclaim blessed are we because even in the whirlwind of anxieties and violence and death, we sense, we remember that we are not alone. We proclaimed blessed are we because we are alive and breathing still. So, 
we light a single candle as a call to hope with our eyes wide awake to God's promised future. Yes, we light a single candle to remember that being human is about figuring out how to keep on keeping on despite all the odds. We light a candle to recommit ourselves to being a light in the darkness because even the darkness is not dark to the Holy One. We light this candle to remind ourselves and one another that even here today, our long expected Jesus is coming. Let us pray. And may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable, O God, our rock, our redeemer, and our soon coming king. It's in his name that we pray, amen. This Advent message is for the hopeful, for all those who have been waiting all year to sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, this message is for you. This Advent message is for the peacemakers, 
for those who are blessed and called children of God because they yearn for a day when wars will cease and fighting will fade away, this message is for you. This message of Advent is for the joyful, for those who have hoisted the Christmas tree long before Thanksgiving Day's twilight of November, for those who sang Christmas carols in October and started shopping in September, this message is for you. This message is for the lovers, for those who hung mistletoe weeks ago and for those who have already purchased the perfect present for their partner. For those who love to express their love through gifts that symbolize with outward sign the inward and spiritual grace that dwells in your heart. This message is for you. And yes, this message is for the hopeless. For those who see no reason to anticipate tomorrow because their yesterday and their today give them no reason. This message is for you. This Advent message is for those who are not at peace, for those at war, with others, with God, with themselves, for those who cannot put down the weapon, for those who yearn for shalom and wholeness and healing for a sense of calm, the end to bickering, the laying down of arms. This message is for you. This Advent message is for the joyless, for those who don't smile during this season, for those who identify more with the Grinch and Scrooge, and for all those who couldn't care less about all the hoopla of the holidays, for, for those who for whom the holidays is just a painful reminder of the way things used to be, of loved ones who used to gather round the table, round the tree. This message is for you. Yes, this Advent message is for the loveless, for those waiting for love, for those who have lost love, for those who have never known the love that your heart has longed for. This message is for you. This Advent message is for all of us, we who live in this anxious age. We who swing back and forth between hope and despair. We who live with the constant all the time anxiety that won't seem to be shaken, but still the anxiety that still shakes our bodies. This message is for all of us who have experienced disappointment and deep sadness on Thursday when our Thanksgiving tables looked and felt so very different. This message is for we who live in an age that is nothing short of apocalyptic. That's what the headlines say, right? I quote, the US could face an apocalypse by Christmas as COVID-19 cases surge, said one news source. The headlines tell us that record numbers of hospitalizations have placed hospital systems at capacity once again, but this time even worse than before. The headlines tell us, right, that there has been a further erosion of common sense when the now conservative Supreme Court ruled this week that gatherings and houses of worships cannot be limited to 10 persons. Against very plain science, the kangaroo court has made a fallacious argument in favor of so-called religious freedom. An unscientific ruling that will literally kill people. Surely we are living a real life version of that 1979 film Apocalypse Now. But like the term prophecy that we consider the last few weeks, I submit to you that the word apocalypse holds so much more meaning than its common 
everyday usage. And in fact, while I know this might sound strange, today I want to argue that Advent actually anticipates the apocalypse. Yes, Advent actually anticipates the apocalypse. That for us, we who are Christians, there is an Advent advantage that is afforded by the Christian apocalyptic alternative. Okay, so what does all this mean? What am, do I mean besides using a whole lot of alliteration? Let's start by looking at the meaning of these words that we use so often. First, Advent means coming and apocalypse means uncovering. Yes, beloved, we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel to mark the season of Advent because the Latin word Adventus by definition means to come. And we are anticipating the coming of God with us, Emmanuel. And apocalypse comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which literally means an uncovering, a revealing. So yes, if 2020, this Job kind of year has been apocalyptic, then what we're saying is that there has been a revealing an unveiling, an uncovering of, yes, the inequities and disparities that disproportionately affect certain communities. During this apocalyptic and anxious age, yes, there has surely been another kind of revealing, too. There has been an uncovering of the things that really do matter how we spend our time and with whom we spend it, how we spend our money, how we engage in this world that feels like it's falling apart. We've learned some lessons. 2020 has taught us, is still teaching us. It's teaching us about strength. And, and we've discovered, we've uncovered, what has been revealed is that we are stronger than we thought. What has been revealed is that we are more resilient than we could have ever imagined. And there is yet still so very much that has not yet been seen. For it is written, beloved, but in those days, after that time of distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will lose its brightness. The stars will fall and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the promised one coming in clouds with great power and with glory. And in those days, they will see the promised one coming. Oh yes, beloved, in a word, 2020 has taught us to hope. And the unveiling of 2020 has taught us something about hope because it's written in Paul's letter to the churches at Rome that hope that is seen is not hope at all. So the unveiling and revealing of 2020 and the hope that lies within is our ability to see and to perceive differently. You see, beloved, Advent is about coming into another reality, 
and choosing the alternative road less traveled, the apocalyptic path, Adventus, the way of Christos, an uncovering, a discovery, so that we might see the promised one that is coming. That's hope. During this season, we might see with spiritual eyes a hope that is not seen with physical eyes. During this season, we might build a hope not made with these hands of clay, but, but a hope that is constructed in our hearts. Yes, beloved, Advent is so much more than a, a time of the year. It's a season in our hearts. It's an invitation for us to awake, to be watchful, to be alert, to stay awake, to stay alert, and to see in the unveiling of what God is doing, for it is written, heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words will not pass away. But as for the day or the hour, no one knows, says our gospel reading from Mark, neither the angels of heaven nor the only begotten, no one but Abba God. So be constantly on watch, stay awake. You do not know when the appointed time will come. So stay alert. You see, beloved, a real hope is not some kind of flimsy optimism that comes and goes with the blowing of the wind. Real hope is not some emotion that goes up and down with the irrational exuberance of the stock market. Real hope is not a passing fancy or a meaningless phrase like, well, I hope I get a brand new Maserati for Christmas. No, real hope is anchored. It is anchored in the ancient story, a story that anticipates the coming of Christ. Again, an annual celebration of his first coming as Emmanuel, God with us, hope has roots, it is, it is planted, planted by the waters and it shall not be moved. Hope is grounded in the soil of the ancestors, the, the soil of the ancestors and that ancient story and in that soil, the soil of the ancestors that it is planted, hope anticipates what is to come. And Advent also brings with it our expectation of Christ's second coming and the apocalypse at the end of times. Yes, the Advent, the coming of Messiah, you see, comes from a very real need in the world, from a world that has been broken wide open. Our longing for the second coming when all things are made right, emerges out of a deep sense that so much has gone wrong. So much injustice, so much pain, so much devastation, so much destruction. So we wait for that second revealing, that apocalypse when all things will be known. And, and no, we're not we're simply talking about some time in a sweet by and by, but, but our hope for the end days folds back into our present days in a way that transforms how we show up in the world. Because we know that the God who is and who is to come is a God who has literally embodied God's self in a way that we might know that God is real. Because God is neither a mere abstraction 
nor a simple ideal. God is real and comes in the form of humanity. The one who did not consider it robbery to empty God's self and enter humbly into a body. A body that experiences a pain that we feel. So God knows in the very realest of ways what we bear during these days. And as we look forward to that moment, that singular moment in history, that utterly transformational event, that incarnation that has universal and eternal significance, we look forward to that hope. And we journey towards it during this season of Advent. Because we know that, that amidst the brokenness, there is an inbreaking, an incarnation. God comes in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. An inbreaking when God, the one who dwells beyond all time and space, enters into time and space in order to transform time for all times. And this inbreaking, it begins. It begins to mend the brokenness of this world. And I say begin because Advent celebrates the incarnation, the first coming, as it anticipates the second coming. When the apocalypse does come in its finality, and there is that last revealing, the ultimate uncovering, and the what will be, will be. And the future becomes present. And the future to be just is. Yes, beloved. In actuality, Advent anticipates apocalypse. And for us, you see, hope is not the denial of anxiety. It's acknowledging it. And acknowledging also an alternative path and taking it. Hope is not the denial of anxiety is acknowledging anxiety. It's acknowledging also that there is an alternative path and taking it. That's the advent advantage and awakening to the apocalyptic alternative as it marks our new year. As Christians, we get a, a jump start on the new year. Our, our Christian new year with the beginning of Advent gets a head start, to alternative beginning, then the calendrial new year, which gives us, right, an opportunity to live even into hope, even in advance, even in advance. Okay, in conclusion, let me say it this way. And since it's Advent, let's try something new. Let's enter into nerd mode for just one moment more. I tried using this Zoom feature in my Black Lives Matter and theology class that I'm teaching over at BU. So let's see if this actually works in church. Beloved, we have two options. When we find ourselves in the midst of anxiety, we have two options. The first option that we experience uh, is the one where we choose apathy, right? Our exhaustion from the constant state of anxiety during these apocalyptic times can lead to 
apathy, a certain resignation that there's nothing left to be done, right? We've got a new president, uh, a vaccine is on the way. So, so everything's a, a fait accompli. And, and that gives us a false sense of hope, a false hope that new president, vaccine coming, all is well. Uh, it, 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 it's the type of a flimsy optimism in the future that, that gives up and, and, and stops the fight just because things have begun to change. Right, this, this, this hopelessness uh, is a flimsy optimism, this hopelessness. And this hopelessness also is the resignation and apathy that abandons all sense of hope altogether. That's option one. But option two, I believe is offered to us through Advent, the Christian alternative. Option two is the choice of hopefulness. The hopefulness that comes alive in the scripture from Mark chapter 13, that comes alive when we awake, when we acknowledge the devastation that is in our midst, when we appreciate God's goodness, even in the midst of destruction, we see that God is still creating, God is still constructing, that God is still faithful, and that the God who has been with us is still with us and will never leave us. Yes, yes, this Thanksgiving was different, but still we have realized that we have so much to be grateful for. And, and since we're still here and we're alive, and since we're alive, we might as well live with gratitude, with appreciation. So we're awake to this moment. We're awake to this moment. And third, we anticipate. We anticipate the incarnation and the second coming. When we adopt an attitude of gratitude, we see more than meets the eye, because hope that is seen is not hope at all. So there's an unveiling, there's an apocalypse. So we anticipate the incarnation, both the first and second coming, when love is enfleshed and hope is embodied. That's the second option, to choose to be awake because of the incarnation that breaks in to the world and transforms the world for all times. This inbreaking. It mends the brokenness of the world. And the incarnation, it disrupts the disruption. So beloved, on the advent of this COVID Christmas and this Job kind of year, this is good news. This inbreaking mends the brokenness of the world and the incarnation, it disrupts the disruptions that this year has brought. That's hope. So let us awake, awake to this hope, awake to this message of Advent. This message is for those who have lost hope for those who have regained it. And those of us who are in the process of regaining it, 
because yes, beloved, hope is the uncovering, the unveiling, the revealing of that Christian alternative, apocalyptic path. May we choose it. And may we sing this season, O come, O come, Emmanuel, even when so many things about tomorrow we don't know and we don't seem to understand. On this day, today, this start of Advent, we know who holds our hands. So let's begin. Amen. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day And I don't borrow from your sunshine For dark clouds may turn to gray and I don't worry about my future for I know what you said that today you are beside me What lies ahead Many things about tomorrow I just don't seem to wonder Thank you to Willie for the gift of song and to Pastor Jay for his teaching and preaching this morning. Surely we are blessed at this church called Union. 
where social distancing and pandemics and social collapse cannot stop us from coming together, from preaching the word of God, from receiving the spirit, from feeling loved, from worshiping, from expressing our praise. We give God thanks that this place called Union is and will continue to be, not because of the preacher, not because of the pastors, not because of the musicians, but because of each and every person here for showing up, for being who you are and how you are in the image that God created you to be. We give God thanks. So allow me to point to the, the doors, the open doors of this church and say, why don't you come? If you are here, you are already part of the Union family. There's no question about it. But I wanna make an invitation that if you'd like to join us in formal membership, meaning if you want to make Union your spiritual home, if you want your vows to be made known, if you want a community to know you and see you and support you just as you support the community, this invitation is for you. Whether you're a member or not, I know you're anxious. I know you're anxious. But as we heard the word preached, remember that that anxiety doesn't have to put you to sleep. It can wake you up. It can move you somewhere. And know this, we are going somewhere. You don't have to have all of the answers. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to have a heart that wants to come and a spirit that knows that something about this place is special. These are the hopes we are walking into on this Advent season. So if you would like to talk further about formal membership, uh, or even you wanna to commit to join on this day, go ahead and uh, log on to unionboston.org slash join. Uh, you'll reach out to Pastor Jay or myself. We'll have a conversation and know that this place is ready to welcome you. You belong here. You belong here. And I'm sorry for all the ways you've been told you don't belong, but here you belong. So why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? At this time, I'd like to invite our lay leader, Ruby Blake, to lead us in the offering. Yes, Union, it's time for the offering. And we keep saying and we keep repeating, we are living through hard times. But there is still so many things that we, we can be thankful for. And in that vein, we ask that you give as you are able. There are three ways to give. For membership, I'm always like, mm. Union right? Boston. We should Dot log on. on. Schedule a meeting. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody's giving an invitation right now, even as Ruby is trying to give the offer to appear. Log on. Unionboston.org forward slash join. Go ahead, Ruby. <laughs> Okay, text, <laughs> text to give, text any dollar amount to 84321 and follow the instructions. Or you can still uh, mail a check to Union United Methodist Church, 45 Columbus Ave, Boston, 02118. Yes, Union, it's time for the offering.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Indeed, we say thank you to the God who gives us laughter. They say that laughter is good for the soul, right? Uh, David H. Reed, a pastor uh, from New York City, actually said that God is in the laughter. God is in the laughter. Uh, so it's a great church family uh, to just be with one another and as uh, one of the ministerial team uh, said, that uh, if you're going to be unmute, you might as well go ahead and be given an altar call as uh, you're unmute. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't a Zoom glitch. It was the Holy Spirit alive in this place because the Holy Spirit is alive in this place and we want you uh, to be part of it. So sometimes we just have to unmute ourselves to give the welcome. All right, we've come to the end of the service, but we want to offer some announcements. I would have turned over to Minister Kyle for a very important one about uh, this season of giving. Minister Kyle. Yeah, thanks, Pastor Jane. So uh, I I'm speaking on behalf of Aaron Holman, uh, who helped run our uh, Christmas coat drive. And the coat drive, we've already gotten all the money, we've already gotten all the coats, and now we have to, all we have to do is uh, deliver them. So Aaron is actually asking for people to help deliver these coats. So if you have a car or you want to help uh, deliver, just email Aaron. Uh, I'm dropping it in the chat right here. You can email her at eeholman at gmail.com. And she would love, love, love help delivering these coats um, to shelters and other people's homes um, that we have already gotten their coats for them. And beyond the coat drive, uh, the, the season of giving continues and we're doing our annual Christmas gift drive. And there are still plenty of people that uh, need to be signed up for, for the gift drive. Um, we have dozens of names that still need help. So uh, please go to uh, uh, unionboston.org slash gift dash a drive, which I'll also post right here. Um, <laughs> just so we've got it, there you go. And you can find all the instructions there. We've also sent it out in uh, the emails, the last two emails. Um, the, the first way you can give is you can sign up on the Google Sheet and then you will purchase a gift. You can wrap it and then drop it off at the church on December 12th or December 13th. All the instructions are on the website or in the email. If you need help signing up for that, you can also email or contact uh, Aaron Holman and her information again is in the instructions. If you're not in town, but you'd still like to uh, give, we'd love for you to give us a cash donation so we can order the gifts, get wrapping supplies and uh, do that ourselves. And finally, if you, if you want that personal touch, uh, you can actually find alternative ways to give by emailing Charlene Zuhl, Reverend Charlene, um, at that email uh, on the slide. And one example could be, uh, maybe you wanna sign up for somebody on the Google Sheet um, and you wanna actually pick out a gift for them like on an online uh, service, then you can actually mail it uh, to somebody and uh, Reverend Charlene can give you an address and then we can take care of wrapping it. Or you can purchase it and wrap it and then uh, mail it to us and we can take care of it. But for that one, it's a little more complicated. So please coordinate with Reverend Charlene. 
So uh, there's lots of ways to give for this year's uh, annual Christmas gift drive. And we're just so thankful already for the people that have signed up. And we hope that everyone else will also participate. Indeed, beloved union. Uh, we are grateful for your uh, generosity and for the ways in which God is moving through you. In addition to uh, the generosity of the coat drive and the tablet ministry and the Christmas drive, uh, we give thanks uh, that our Thanksgiving day of sharing, uh, which of course looked a little bit different this year, but was uh, still uh, a way of outreaching and serving those who, who struggle with food insecurity. We served 63 families, 134 people in the community and in our own Union Church family. Uh, we give uh, thanks to John Jemison in particular uh, for uh, making the deliveries uh, with help from uh, the food pantry team uh, with Andre and Eric. And of course, uh, many thanks and gratitude to Ruth Ann uh, Brown, uh, who has been uh, long on the battlefield and doing uh, such good work coordinating our Christmas drive as well as our uh, food pantry for this day of sharing. As we come to the close of 2020, uh, we do want to invite you, beloved, uh, to make your pledge if you have not uh, done so already. To whom much is given, uh, the invitation is that we might continue to give uh, so that Union as a faith community, we might lean into financial freedom, that we might expand our mission in 2021. Already uh, 2020 has been indeed a year of elevation despite the pandemic challenges. We're looking forward to going even higher in Christ Jesus in 2021. So help us to expand our mission and to endow our future. The uh, link is in the chat. Go to unionboston.org forward slash pledge and make your uh, pledge on what you intend to give in 2021. And we would be grateful. As you know, beloved, uh, one of our saints, one of the saints of union, uh, the Reverend Dr. Bobby McLean, uh, passed on to the church triumphant on November the 18th. You know, uh, Dr. McLean was the lead pastor of Union uh, during the 60s and 70s and then came back for an interim year from uh, July 2017 to June 2018. We're having a virtual celebration of his life on this Saturday, December the 5th at 2 p.m. The link is in the email that uh, went out on Friday and it'll go out again today or tomorrow. Uh, definitely join us as we celebrate this preacher and theologian, civil rights leader and prophet. We give thanks to all those uh, who have uh, helped to make this worship uh, what it is as we lean in and we begin again, always beginning again. Special gratitude to our musicians, to the tech and worship team to our pastoral team as well. Let's hold on, uh, we've had some special music with Okam, Okam Emmanuel, which will be our guide during this season. And we wanna send you forth with a special blessing in music that also will mark this season. But receive this blessing. God, through Christ Jesus, comes to us and unveils to us a hope that gives us an alternative to anxiety and gives us an advantage during this season of Advent. Let's choose that option. Let's choose hope. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn God's face toward you and grant you peace. Receive this sung blessing. Amen.
Thank you to Bob and Angela, Norris and Willie for the sevenfold amen. The lines are open and unmuted. Uh, why don't you greet one another? Go in peace. Everyone have a blessed week. Everyone have a good day.